50s. One meteorologist tweeted out that this could result in the loss of 40 billion tons of ice. It's a climate emergency. Jason Box is an ice climatologist at the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland. Professor, is this an emergency? Yeah, this is a mild post along the way as we watch our climate continue heating up. I'm just checking numbers that we got from our field stations on the ice that are reporting melting that is exceeding the previous record set in 2012. It's Greenland so we're talking, talking about. about many meters of ice loss um, just this summer uh, along the whole western slope of the Greenland ice sheet where the melt is concentrated this year. So yeah, it's a big concern because it's contributing to an acceleration in sea level rise. When you talk about sea rise, project out. What could be the impact of that? It's really hard to project a nonlinear, like exponential rise. We cannot really know 80 years into the future what you know it's going to be like, but odds are because of the overloaded CO2 in the atmosphere, those concentrations continue to rise. Uh, we should expect uh, heat waves to continue to intensify, the rate of ice loss on land to continue to accelerate, sea level rise to continue accelerating but it's hard to put firm right. numbers on it. Well, we do know one thing, that if the entire ice sheet that covers most of Greenland and is 2.4 million years old, if the entire sheet melts, it would raise global sea levels by 23 feet, submerging Boston, Sacramento, and Miami, and we're presuming, you know, other cities around the world as well. I mean, how are residents there reacting to this? In Greenland, it's not such a big deal because Fast weather fluctuations are kind of normal for Greenlandic population, but uh, we actually get 50% more sea level rise in the tropics just because of gravitational changes. And hundreds of global cities coastally will eventually be faced with whether or not they need to retreat from the land or forfeit parts of the coastline. And, and my concern is that will create a political destabilization around the world as people are forced into migration. Well, sure. And we know uh, the only way to get ahead of this is to reduce emissions. Right. I, I think a useful analogy is this is like a train that is starting to accelerate down slope. And we're by limiting greenhouse gas emissions, we would effectively be putting the brakes on this train. We're not going to stop the train instantly. The increasing breakage would be analogous to us uh, making a transition to lower carbon emissions. And eventually, we can stop the train by effectively halting carbon emissions and drawing down from the atmosphere a huge quantity of carbon. Otherwise. Uh, nature will call in the bill um, for the externalities of our economic system. You, you give the analogy of the train, it makes me want to pull for those brakes inside a car where you can stop a train yourself, but we can't. We have to do it globally. Professor Jason Box of the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland in Copenhagen, thank you so much. I'm glad to have the opportunity to report what's happening in Greenland. It's here and now. Of course, that was the uh, Jason Box of the famous We're Fucked quote. When, how many years ago it is? Jason, uh, you know, is one of the first climatologists to uh, make the, the, the tactical error in his career, just to be honest, several years ago. Uh, with his famous quote, we're fucked, which I don't think helped his career a lot. Uh, he seems to be a little bit toned down since the, uh, the most honest two words the man ever uttered. Anyway, it's nice to hear NPR uh, offering some intelligent programming. Uh, I've actually been rather impressed by NPR today. They've uh, they've had like four intelligent programs uh, in one day. So who knows? Maybe even NPR can no longer. Uh, you know, when NPR 
can no longer ignore how fucked we are. Uh, <laughs> NPR today, I guess. <coughs> Fox News tomorrow, perhaps. But I am uh, having fun today. Just uh, blowing carbon out my tailpipe and my gas sucking truck. There you go. There's a. Oh boy. You know, guys, we're so fucked. But I'm. Uh, what I'm doing, how many miles will I drive in all? If I had to. If I had to add up the carbon footprint that I am creating in one day trying to get this little gizmo, literally called a dongle, called a Bluetooth dongle for my new computer, I've already gone to the computer repair shop in Cortland uh, who could not get my goddamn brand new computer you know, to have the sound come out of the, uh, out of my stereo. So, like my other geeks in Austin with my old computer, he's sending me out for a dongle. He doesn't have a dongle. He is a dongle, dongleless computer geek. So he sent me to Walmart. So I drive halfway across the Finger Lakes to go to Walmart. Uh, they do not have a dongle, so they sent me 21 miles farther, so 40, so I would say all together from, by, by the time I start out of the house, get back home, uh, I'm probably going to put conservatively 50 miles uh, on my gas sucking truck for the chance <clears throat> that I may or may not get my goddamn iTunes to come out of my uh, radio. Oh, that reminds me, but I'm going to make a separate little video on recommendations for uh, satellite uh, radio. Anyone who has any recommendations for all of these satellite radios, I sure would appreciate it. Bye, guys.